All right, Zatima fan, season two, episode 12, entitled Risky Business. Nine out of 10. Why is it a nine out of 10? Because I don't feel like I liked it as much as episode 11, but it was still really good. And a nine out of 10 is a hell of a good score. So without further ado, please take a moment to hit the thumbs up button to show you liked the video. Hit subscribe and let's jump into it. So picking up where we left off, Zach is still stuck. Frozen like a statue after Fatima just oh, killed it on stage. Took Paul and left. Because you gotta imagine, as far as I can tell, Zach didn't even know Fatima was gonna be at that club, let alone with Paul. He was going out overnight, you know, for the night with the boys. You know, he had just had that talk with Fatima's uh, stepdad, and, you know, maybe that was enough to make him go sooner than later. I need to talk with her to make things right. So, turns out Belinda rolls up. Her and Nate have been seeing each other, been messing around. Whoa. And she says the catchphrase of the sister's universe. Damn, Atlanta's too damn small because everybody knows everybody. So from there, Zach asks Angela, it's like, hey, you know, is Fatima staying at your place? And Angela's like, um, okay, I'll take that as a yes. So Zach bounces. Basically, we know what's going on. Tony gives him a ride. And Angela's like, hey, we got we gotta go. We gotta go. Because it's like, you know, they ain't going up there tearing my shit. So from there, we got Fatima and Paul, who are about to have sex. And I'm thinking to myself, wasn't the whole thing during the first half of season two, Zach, we're having way too much sex. Roxy can't handle all this. Here's a side chick. But all of a sudden, ho, ho, Roxy came out of rehab. She is ready for some more. And this time she wants Bob the fucking builder. But guess what? It doesn't seem like what Tima can go through with it. That a girl. And the thing about it is, Paul knows full well what's going on here. And part of me wants to go, you know what, Paul? You're a good dude. But then I also remembered... Bro, you ain't shit because you were literally making moves or trying to make moves on this woman while she literally was engaged. So you're still trash. So despite him being un basically this is Fatima had the conversation with Paul that Karen should have had with Aaron. Look, I'm just getting out of a, you know, big relationship. You're clearly the rebound. The thing was, Karen, she wanted to make it seem like Aaron was her true, you know, the next guy. You know, the one who is like, look, my old relationship is over and I want to try things out with you. Not use you to get over my ex, but to, you know, see if we can actually form a good relationship. And to be fair, things were going well until the whole sex in the office thing with Zach. But in any case... Paul doesn't care. He he literally knows what this is. Look, I know you're mad at him right now, but hey, you can use me. Just use me up. Suck me dry. Huh? Just let's do it. And she's like, no, 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 no. And it turns out, you know, during the dinner, he was able to rattle off or, you know, on the sofa, he was able to rattle off a bunch of the things that they have in common because it turns out during the dinner they had, he's a very good listener. But in any case, she's like, look, you know what? I went through therapy in my late 20s and Paul's like, yeah, I went through therapy too. And I know that's good to have somebody to listen to you, get stuff off your chest. But, you know, I'm here now. So let's mess around. She's like, look, I just got out of a big relationship. I think we need to slow down. And she sends him away. So right as Paul is about to get up and leave, Angela and Paul's friend come through the front door and Angela's like, hey, y'all hey, got to go. Y'all got to go. What's going on here? Zach is coming. How do you know? I got a feeling. Yeah, basically, she doesn't want to net, let Fatima know that. Well, honestly, Fatima, I mean, Angela didn't squeal on Fatima being at her place, but Angela isn't always the best liar. So, you know, Zach was able to, you know, well, actually, hasn't it been twice already that Fatima left and went to Angela? So he pretty much knew where to go. But in any case, knowing that Zach is coming, Fatima's like, no, what, Paul, you know what, Paul, you stay. So... Angela's like, y'all y'all ain't tearing my shit up. Y'all get out. Y'all, you go, 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 go. So as they're going outside, you know, Paul and his friend are posted up as Tony and Zach roll up. And Tony just wants to, you know, Tony a real one. Tony wanted, you know, to exchange fists 
real quick. Like, hey, hey, what y'all doing? What y'all doing? But Paul like says, look, you you have nothing to be upset about, Zach. We didn't do anything. She still wants to be with you. And then he and his boy walk off. Zach goes to the front door, knocks, and, you know, Angela lets him and Tony in. And, you know, Fatima hides. And, and later on in the episode, Angela says it. But going back to rewatch the scene, Zach was so damn pitiful. Fatima, Fatima, I want to talk to you. Fatima, I love you. Fatima, please. Please. She doesn't want to talk to you, Zach. And then, you know, hey, hey, it was a little bit disrespectful, you know, putting his hand in her face like, look, ain't nobody talking to you, Angela. Fatima, please. I ain't going to lie. Even I felt bad. I'm like, yo, Fatima, go go talk to your boy. Just, just, just go talk to him. But no, just like when it came to Zach wanting Fatima to feel bad using, you know, by using Connie, you got Fatima trying to make Zach feel bad with the Paul thing by not talking to him. So... You know, they end up leaving. So from there, um, mm -mm -mm. Zach is still not on board with the deal that Valerie presented. Oh yeah, we we go to the next day back to Rise Ventures. You know, uh, Bryce pops in, and from there, you know, Zach is like, "So what do you say about Doctor E?" Um, basically, I think he's a, he was right about everything. And, um, Zach is asking Bryce some heavy hitting questions. Like, do you think I need therapy? And it's like, it doesn't really matter what I think, man. Like, do you think you need therapy? Basically the dude's legit. And sometimes everybody, every, we all got issues. And sometimes it is good to have somebody to talk to those, you know, with about those issues. But Hey, you know, I got a contractor who wants to show us the property. So I don't, you know, if you get a chance, man, let's just go check it out. It's a good deal. So it's like, all right, keep me posted. We'll go check it out later. Now, over at Fatima's job in her office, she gets a phone call from Dr. Reed basically saying, hey, can you come by my office by noon? And um, I'm thinking to myself, hmm, I wonder if Paul told Dr. Reed about the night before. And now it's like, you know, hey, talk to her about Zach or something kind of, you know, to vouch for me. So in any case, Angela pops into the office and um, <sighs> Fatima basically says, it's going to take her some time to talk to Zach if she even wants to. Basically, she has her limits, you know, with the whole baby mama and all that stuff. That's one thing. But lying and cheating is her breaking point. And it's ironic because yesterday I recorded a video about I wonder what Fatima's breaking point is. And now we know lying and cheating. But basically says, fuck him. And it, you can tell she's like trying to have her principles. But really, at the end of the day. She's hurt and she wants Zach to suffer. Just like in the same way Zach was hurt and he wanted to make her suffer by using Connie as a reason. Like, oh, I cheated on you, but I really didn't. So it was like, you know what? We, when we got these rules and whatnot and men break them, we need to make sure they feel bad about it. You know, that their actions have consequences. And you can just tell Fatima doesn't really believe what she's saying because she really loves Zach. That's really what it boils down to. So it turns out she plans on going out with Paul again that night. Angela tries to be the voice of reason, but at, you know, she's like, so since when are you siding with Zach? Girl, he was pitiful last night. Even I felt bad for him. Ah, fuck him. <laughs> so from there, we go over to um the barbershop. Zach is, you know, having a brief conversation with Mr. Tyrone. It's ironic because, you know, Mr. Tyrone represents a good portion of the older community, black community because in recent years, you know, mental health and whatnot has really been a talking point within our people but our culture but you know there are those who just scoff at the idea of going to you know talk to a shrink and whatnot and yeah i can relate i got people like that in my family so in any case like look just don't be taking no advice from the knuckleheads like you know my boy and uh, nathan so <laughs> man he's like how are you doing today mr tyrone partly cloudy wait what this weed ain't doing nothing for me i almost fell out my chair when he said that so nate rolls up and um they talk about the Belinda situation and Zach makes it clear. Like, look, me and her hooked up one time. It was not a long running thing, but you better be careful. man. You might want to go check yourself out because you know what? There ain't no sloppy seconds. You're probably like sloppy 4,273. I'm just saying like, I, I got my own body count, but I didn't know like people like her, you know, she got her own count too. And sadly I'm not on the list. So in any case, um, Turns out the reason he messed around with uh, Belinda or any other woman is the fact that Lori isn't answering his calls. He's put letters in the mailbox. She ripped them up. 
he's not allowed in the house. So Lori's just kind of done with him. So from there, um, <laughs> damn, I kind of feel bad. So from there, we go over to Paul and Fatima. Um, it turns out Paul just stopped by the law firm to pick up some tools and whatnot he left behind. And it turns out he was about to invite Fatima to dinner, but Fatima was about to invite him as well. So it turns out, you know, 8 p.m. they'll go out. Angela's posted up. It's like, damn, he fine. And um, she's like, are you sure about the dinner? Yes, I'm sure. So she can't go to lunch because of the fact that she's going to that 12 o'clock meeting with Dr. Reed. And from there, we go over to Belinda, who stops by the barbershop as Tony and Nate are sitting outside. And um, <laughs> it's funny because I think this is the second time in universe they've made mention of Tony just, you know, sweating so much. He's like, oh, yeah, y'all talk. I I got to go inside. You know, it's hot. It's like, yeah, you need a towel. <laughs> so he goes inside. And Belinda and Nathan talk. You can tell Nate's a bit nervous about the whole thing that Zach told him in regards to her body count. And instead of going out for Chinese, you know, treating her, it's like, hey, can you treat me? It's like, oh, I got 40 hours, you know, scheduled this week. I could pay you back. So they agree to go out. And it turns out during the conversation that, you know, yeah, you know, thanks for showing me that app and whatnot. So they, they may have been working behind the scenes to mess things up with Zach and Fatima, like, you know, that dating app and whatnot, and, you know, cluing each other in on the relationship status. So, yeah, it looks like they both conspired to break them up. And in the midst of the cackling, who else pops up but old Angela? Like, hey, what y'all doing? It's like, none, none. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get our table at the restaurant. Nice seeing you again. And basically, Angela's a bit suspicious, but, you know, it's kind of played off. Like, you know, okay, yeah, okay, all right. Well, I'll talk to you later, girl. It's like, yeah, tell Fatima I'm sorry about what happened with Zach. And uh, if she needs anything, call me. Mm-hmm. So then, um, wow, we're almost done. So Zach goes to his old neighborhood he runs into connie and um you know she pretty much very flirtatious with him and you know hey zach got a smile on his face even though they didn't have sex but you know she makes it clear it's like you know what let's finish what we didn't get started last time it's like nah nah and you know in the last episode nate tony was like you know they ain't had sex they were only up there 10 minutes and if it, me and zach we, we we got you know stamina or whatnot we would have been a couple hours and you know like if i was up in there tearing that ass up and zach ain't no 10 minute man like you Lori bragging about t uh, 10 minute Nate. Nah, nah, nah. So he goes over to his brother and mom and sad to say, but he has to pay them to even talk to them. And she wants to go for a ride to get some cigarettes. And Jeremiah doesn't want to come. But then strangely enough, we fast forward to the end of the episode. Fatima shows up at Dr. E's office. Dr. E says, hey, you know what? Don't be surprised. They walk into the office and who we have? Zach, his brother, and Ma. And Jeremiah's like, oh, hell no. And then the episode cuts off. I'm like, damn it. That was good. This was a very solid episode. I might not have as much um, commentary as episode 11, but this was a very good watch, and I cannot wait for next week. So, Risky Business, definitely in relation to the proposition that Bryce is still trying to push on Zach, which leads to later on in the season where they're probably going to lose their money which we know they eventually get it back based off of Sister Season 6. So in any case, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Belinda is Bay, and I'll catch you in the next one.